Hey, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be looking at fractions again today. We're going to be dividing fractions, which is a little kind of similar to multiplying fractions. In fact, it's exactly like multiplying fractions, only it's different. All right, so here are the steps for dividing fractions. First, you write the second fraction as its reciprocal. Change the question to multiplication. Multiply like normal, and you're done. That's it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, ready to go. Wait a minute. What? You don't know what a reciprocal is. Oh, OK. Well, let's back up a bit and talk about what a reciprocal is. Another way of thinking of it is like a reciprocal, because we flip the fraction upside down. That's what a re reciprocal is, or a reciprocal. It's right there. OK, so we have 2 thirds. The reciprocal is 3 halves, or 3 over 2. That's all it is, is you're just flipping over those fractions. All right, so let's practice um, finding some reciprocals here. We'll start with this one. 2 over 9. The reciprocal is 9 over 2. Not bad. 4 over 3 would become 3 over 4. That's the reciprocal. Negative 1 over 5 is negative 5 over 1. Now. This is a special case here because negative 5 over 1, 5 divided by 1 is 5. So instead of writing it as a fraction of 5 over 1, we can just say negative 5. And that takes us to our final example, 12. How would we flip over 12? Well, we would have to recognize that 12 can also be written as 12 over 1. So the reciprocal would then be 1 over 12. All right, so reciprocal is just that, flipping over a fraction. When you get whole numbers, you flip them over, put them in the denominator, and put 1 in the numerator. When you get 1 over a certain number, you can flip it over to being 5 over 1, but if that's your final answer, you would go ahead and simplify and just get rid of the denominator. All right, now let's move on to dividing. If we have 1 third divided by 5 fourths, we would take the reciprocal of the second fraction, so we flip that one over, and then we multiply. All right, so the division changes to multiplication, and we flip over the second fraction. So we're, when you're asked to divide a fraction, we call this multiplying by the reciprocal. So then you just multiply like normal, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. We get our final answer, and we're done. All right. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to show a couple of sample questions of the different types of multiplying fractions or dividing fractions, I'm sorry, we might look at. I'm going to mix in some negatives and mix in some whole numbers and see what we can do. In all cases, we're going to follow the same pattern. We're going to take 2 over 7. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal, 6 over 3. 2 times 6, 2 times 6 is 12. 7 times 3, 7 times 3 is? 21. And then with this one, we can actually reduce it down. If there is a way to reduce a fraction into lower terms, we definitely want to do that every opportunity that we have. In this case, it has the common or common factor, the greatest common factor of 3. So we divide both the top by 3 and the bottom by 3. And so our final answer would be 4 over 7. So that's our simplified fraction. All right, this one here we're asked to flip and solve, or in other words, multiply by the reciprocal. So 4 over 5 gets multiplied times, and this is the case where we have um, just a whole number. So 12, we have to remember that we can write that as 12 over 1, and the reciprocal is 1 over 12. Now we'll multiply 4 times 1 is 4, 5 times 12 is 60, so then that would be our um, our answer, but we can't just leave it like that because there are some common factors here. So if we had 4 over 60, the greatest common factor is 4. We'll divide both by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 60 divided by 4 is 15. I always remember that fraction because, you know, 60 minutes divided into 15 sections, you know four segments of 15 minutes each. Quarter of an hour is 15 minutes, stuff like that. 
So that's how we would flip this one over, solve it, and then simplify it to a fraction in lowest terms. All right, here's another one that's a bit of a challenge. 8 divided by 1 over 8. So that one, we're going to, again, remember that 8 is the same as 8 over 1. And it is negative, but that's really not going to change much with us and how we do things. Oh, whoops, I do need to, I do need to flip the fraction over, though. So instead of being 1 over 8, I'm going to be multiplying by the reciprocal of 8 over 1. 8 times 8 is 64. I have to remember it's negative 8 times positive 8, so I'm going to get a negative result of negative 64 over 1, and that simplifies to being simply negative 64. All right? Remember, if we have a 1 in the denominator, for our final answer, we can just get rid of that, because this just means 64 divided by 1, and 64 divided by 1 is 64. All right, one last question. What if we get something like this, 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds? Well, I guess I'm going to have to multiply by the reciprocal, 2 thirds times 3 over 2. That gives me 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6, and then I simplify 6 over 6 to being 1. Now, I could have saved myself having to do that work if I looked at this and said, any number divided by itself gives me 1. You know, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds is equal to 1. All right? But by multiplying by the reciprocal, we show the property of multiplying by the reciprocal. That any fraction multiplied by its reciprocal, any number multiplied by its reciprocal is equal to 1. So that's the same thing as saying, you're dividing it by itself, and it's equal one to one. So that was one last question, just to kind of throw things out there and, and talk a little bit about reciprocals and some properties that we know about reciprocals. Hopefully that lesson on dividing fractions has been helpful for you.